What a beautiful day. It's perfect for talking about camera stuff. And today we're talking about what lens you should be buying for your camera. Is that gonna focus? Why is it not focusing? There we if go. If you're trying to buy a camera, you have a lot of options of lenses to what you want to pair it with. You could go with the 24 to 50 kit lens or 18 to 55 kit lens or you know it's somewhere around there depending on what camera you get. But usually it's somewhere around there. Or you can go with the upgraded version of the kit lens, which is a 24 to 70 or 24 to 105 or something like that. Or you could go with a prime lens, which is uh, it's just a singular focal length, which is uh, you know something like this. It'll focus. Which, if you're new to being a photographer or videographer, all this can be very intimidating. But I'm here to help you. We're gonna go over what I think you should get for your first lens, and we're gonna go over why I think you shouldn't go with other lenses. Starting with the kit lens, unless you're doing landscape where you want a high aperture, there's not gonna be very much use for it because you're not gonna be able to stay at a low aperture. If you're at the lowest focal length of your kit lens, then it is okay. As soon as you go up to the highest part of your focal length, you're gonna lose all of your, your uh, aperture. You're gonna have, it's gonna have to be smaller because when you zoom in, it has to shrink. It's usually a 24 to 50, uh, F4 to F6 or something like around those numbers. And unless you're shooting landscape photography, there's really not a whole lot of reason to go that high in the f-stop unless there's a specific reason for it but those are few and far between at least for me and then also there's just no reason to have a 24 to 50 when you could get a 24 to 100 or a 24 to 70 or any other type of zoom lens because that's not 24 to 50 isn't that big of a difference there's just so many other options out there that, that it just doesn't make sense to go with that one <laughs> And honestly, the only thing I can think of that is a pro for, oh crap. The only thing I can think of as a pro for a kit lens is the fact that it's really cheap. There's a whole lot of other lenses out there that are almost just as cheap, if not cheaper or slightly more expensive that will give you way better performance and you won't, you're, you're gonna end up buying these lenses anyway. So there's no reason to go with the kit lens first. So next being the upgraded kit lens, you know, extra few bucks, you can get the 24 to 105 or the 24 to 70 or whatever your camera comes with. It is really good because you have a lot more versatility with it. You can shoot it, you know, super wide angle or super zoomed in. And it's not just stuck to, you know, just some little, little bit of focal length for not a very good aperture. So it's a, it's a better option, but, I honestly wouldn't go with that one either just because you also don't have a good aperture with it. Basically the same aperture as the 24 to 50. Not saying that it's like wrong to go for it, but I like having that bokeh in the background, you know? Now there's an even more expensive version of the 24 to 105 that stays at f4 for as long as you want it to be there. f4 being the lowest at any focal length you could have set it to, but that's more expensive. Like I would rather just get other lenses that can go lower than that but if you don't plan on going below f4 it's definitely a good option which leads me to the prime lenses so these lenses you can't zoom in or out with them they're stuck at a singular focal length with that downside you do get more sharpness with the prime lenses so in turn your videos will look a little bit more crisp which is uh, you know it depends on what you want in your video like if you care about really good sharpness or not I like sharpness and I like to have as much of it as I can and if I'm not changing focal lengths a whole lot then I think a prime is perfect especially because there are some primes out there that that are very versatile meaning it's not going to take too many steps back and forward to get whatever angle you want or you can get walk a little bit closer get a close-up and everything and it all looks good so there's a bunch of different primes you can get pretty much any focal length you could think of out there there's a uh, 16 there's there's a bunch of fish eyes out there that where it's like round and super super wide like four or five millimeter or something like that there's 24 there's uh 35 there's 50 there's 85 but one prime lens that i would not recommend getting for your first lens on your camera is a 100 or an 85 pretty much any 85 or farther higher up 
um, mostly just because they're not super versatile you will not be able to get a lot of angles that you're probably going to want to get just because you get if you get too close you're not going to be able to see everything so it's more of like a I would say it's a, sec a good secondary lens to get other things or to get, you know, sports or things like that. So if that's what you're trying to, if you're just going to be shooting like soccer or football or something, I think a 100 to 3, 100 to 200 or 70 to 200 or somewhere along the lines of that would be perfect. Um, you can find some pretty cheap ones if you don't care about aperture, which, but if you're shooting that kind of thing or like wildlife, wildlife actually a 24 to 105 would be pretty good for wildlife just because you can zoom in and out and you know animals walk close they run away all that kind of stuff and uh, f4 would be i think the perfect one unless you don't care about having a shallow depth of field so for instances like that if that's what you're doing mostly then i would say those are perfect but if you're going to be a photographer and you're gonna be doing a lot of different things like if you're going to be doing street photography portraits and just a, a wide array of stuff I don't think anything like that would be perfect for this I think there's other lenses that are a lot better for it but my butt hurts Ugh. so if not any of these lenses what lens should you get first for your camera the first lens you should get for your camera is a 50 millimeter 1.8 f-stop or if you really don't like that one i would say 35 millimeter f 1.8 f-stop but i prefer the 50 mil just because it's a little bit more versatile you know you can get close you can get far angles and still have it you know for pretty much anything you don't get to zoom in but you get good sharpness and it doesn't take a whole lot of steps to get whatever angle you want with it and it's an f.1 it's an f 1.8 which means you can do anything from 1.8 up to like 22 f stop so you have the complete versatility of where you'd want to go uh, depth of field wise and it's for pretty much any camera you could you get out there it's going to be cheap you can get a cheap one, uh, the Canon's 50mm, which is the one I'm using. Uh, that is a, it's about 300 bucks for that. Going with another company, or if you have a E-mount, the EF, it's, uh, I think it's a little less. It's like maybe like 150, something like that. And then you can always get it used and get it even cheaper. Uh, pretty much every other brand also has a 50 mil that's relatively cheap that you can get a good f-stop on. I would recommend to go with that one as your first lens for any camera. I've been filming with it this whole video and I've been getting all these different angles just to sort of show you what it looks like. And I totally understand if you don't agree with me, but this is my opinion. And if you disagree with me, then you're wrong. Just kidding. I do think that is this is the best lens to get as your first lens for any camera. Also, another really big pro to a 1.8 f-stop 50 mil is you get to have a really wide open aperture, meaning you let more light in, meaning you can film at nighttime and it looks perfectly fine, not have to crank up the ISO so much. So, thought I'd be here in, at nighttime, show it off a little bit. So, more versatility in the lighting situations, more versatility with your depth of field, more versatility with uh, your your angles just because for a prime lens it's pretty all around because it's kind of smack dab in the middle and then more just it's really versatile in every way except for zooming in and out but if you don't have a lot of money to spend on a lens and you're just now getting a new camera to figure it out anyways then you're not gonna need to zoom in and out a whole lot anyways because you'll be able to, you need to, you can just walk a little bit forward or a little bit back and you can get most of your shots. And if you now know what lens you wanna get and you wanna decide what camera to get, I have a video up here on the Canon R8 and I sort of review it and I feel like you're gonna want to hear that one. So I'll see you in that one.